Hello and welcome to Book Review 19 on MIP TV, where Bob Cook from Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy reviews his favourite books. And have a look at the playlist because we've got just loads and loads of interviews where Bob talks about his book. But this one is quite an interesting book, Changing Lives Through Redecision Therapy. Therapy. So I'm guessing, Bob, and correct me if I'm wrong, this may be the Redecision School in TA. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Congratulations. <laughs> you passed the TA test. That's correct. Great. <laughs> so what... I yeah, so a, a, a specific school in the arc of, of the development of transactional analysis. So tell us a little bit about this book and share a little bit about the insights it gives into this school of therapy. Okay. I was coming back, I can't remember, from San Francisco about five or six years ago. And the person said to me, what do you do for a life? I, I said, I was a psychotherapist and a transactionalist. He said, oh, yes, transaction analysis. I know that's about Eric Byrne. I said, yes. And, you know, we're now in 2006 or whatever it was. It's evolved a lot. And I was talking about the different approaches. And then I was talking about the redecision approach by Bob and Mary Goulding, which really started to take its own uh, wonderful format after Eric Byrne died in 1971 to 2000, 2000 2003, and really became a real central um, school, if you like. And the person next to me said, that's really interesting. So as you charted all these different approaches, what makes up a TA therapist then? So I said, look, a person who thinks of transaction analysis proper, that's you know a theory of communication, eager states, games and scripts then you can call yourself a ta therapist and all the other approaches are simply styles mm. so this is a style or an approach which has evolved from 1971 to about 2002 three um and it was called the redecision approach it still is of course because even though the founders are dead robert and mary goulding it was a very popular um uh, approach if you want to put it that way basically it's about the idea that, you know, people really make changes in their lives from the child ego state and that you need to work with the child ego state because that's where the original decision, which are so often was the um, aspect of the personality which sabotaged their own process, where they got stuck in, uh, where they couldn't solve their problems from because they were actually living and coming from this young, more... Uh, regress place. So Mary and B their ideas was that you need to go back in time, find out the decision which was so limiting to your script and your changes today, and then make a new redecision so that you can take ownership of your own life and change in the uh, adult or present time. So it's working specifically with the unconscious and child ego state. Yeah, and it also sounds like it's working very much with script and the script. Yes. The scripts that people make in childhood and know we've just discussed another book where the theory said that you know the script is developed through an arc of time not just in childhood and that's that's the kind of hallmark of this of this particular mm. school isn't it that what they're saying yes. is is that is it the initial decisions made in childhood subconsciously and then it's developed Correct. yeah 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 it's so, a real hallmark and with this book what happens is you're completely correct. You really are. Is the uh, Bob and Mary Goulding would say that you need to uh, look at injunctions, counter injunctions, and the early decisions, um, and then make new decisions. Uh, and the method for doing that was through going back into time to an earlier time you may you made those decisions, and through two chair technique or or simply um, playing or role playing with different parts of yourself you make new decisions which you can integrate into your more mature part and then hunky-dory, there we go, you take destiny of your own script. Well, there we go, you take your life in your own hands and write write your own part in, in the world's play, as, as Shakespeare mm. might have said. I, I just want to pick up on something you said there about two-chair work. A lot of people listening to this mm. may very well say, isn't that gestalt? Isn't that a gestalt idea, two-chair, empty-chair work? How does that how does that play out in TA that in this particular um, okay. modality, okay. if you like, or thinking? Okay, Fritz Perls stole the idea of two chair technique 
from Marino. Marino was the psychoanalyst that started up the whole idea of psychodrama. Um, and he, he used the idea of um, playing out or yeah, playing out the different conflicts of the different side of yourself in actual drama, which sometimes is called psychodrama, sometimes sculpturing. And he used the method of two chairs to actually play those two conflicts out. Now, you know, Fritz, when he came along as the originator of Gestalt psychotherapy, used those ideas from Marino and uh, used the same ideas to enable people to actually play out the different conflicts of the self. And he called the two positions top dog or lower dog. And they became synonymous with Gestalt psychotherapy. But like everything else, there's no original thought, well, perhaps there's a bit, but the ideas were taken from Marino in terms of the methodology of those two chairs. Yeah, and what would happen is that the client would be encouraged to speak to maybe an earlier self or... or... Yeah, or a different part of the self. Yeah, yeah. So, so of the hopeless self or the, you know, the uh, compliant self or the rebellious self versus the more powerful self, which might represent different conflicts of the self or even may represent the internalised parent talking to the compliant child in TA terms. Yeah, and I think what's really interesting, and this is what I love about these book reviews, Bob, is that you really um, kind of expand on the theory. You know, we've, we've heard about scripts. We have already know that, that there's one school that thinks that, that this particular school thinks scripts oh, develop yeah. strongly in childhood. Got another school that thinks yeah. they develop over. But also about that re-decision about getting clients Correct. to re rewrite their script. In other words, they're yeah. characters in a play, but they are the directors Correct. and the script writers of that play. That, right. Yeah, that, what a wonderful way to put it, Rory. I like, really like that. Yes, it's the only way I can understand it, Bob. <laughs> yeah, they are responsible for their own direction of their films, yes. and therefore they can change that. Yeah. And they're the people that really alter their destiny. So this book really outlines this particular idea oh. within ta this style as you yeah. discussed earlier yeah and yeah. useful yeah. for who who'd benefit from reading this bob students again of course in transaction analysis is great for us and for for people who want to know the early development again of transaction analysis people want to know the development away from eric burns classical school people who are interested in how people make changes in their unconscious and it's a wonderful historical uh, document of the early parts of transaction analysis in terms of evolution, of course. But the ideas of making change from the unconscious is such a, uh, a novel idea in terms of that you can be like a director in your own film and you can make new decisions and you can put them, you know, they, you can put them into practice. So for the student particularly, for the historian, you know, the historians of transaction analysis and people who want to think about how change really happens. Well, I, I know as, as always, just just really rich information here. And, you know, for, for anybody watching, I mean, it's just, I just think it's brilliant. I've learned so much in this short interaction we've had. As always, this isn't a paid book review. You know, Bob's not getting paid no. for this and neither, neither am I as a book review. Um, uh, Bob just does this for, you know, the fun of it. We have to say that on YouTube now because of the way YouTube yeah. works. So my free child has really, 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 really gone wild. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So <laughs> yes, indeed, yes. The, the free child of, of YouTube. Yes, yes. So um, yeah, yeah. we're going to put a, a link in the in the description bar below. So if you want to inspect this book, click on it. And also in the outro, we'll put a graphic up so you can see what the book looks like and also a description just to remind you. But as always, Bob Cook. Thank you so much for giving the time and sharing this wonderful book. Thank you very much, Roy.